Good afternoon. We are going to get started. There are other people that are expected, so there might be people coming in. Um, but I'm Victoria Wright. I'm the Marketing and Outreach Coordinator for Department of Procurement Services, and this is how to navigate the DPS website. Everybody's here for that workshop? Okay. <laughs> so um, you should have signed the sign-in sheet, taken an evaluation, and taken the handouts for this class. Also, in the materials rack in the hallway, we have the DPS buy-in plan. If you want to take one on your way out, but that's the most recent, just came out Monday, of everything that the city of Chicago will purchase in the next 12 months. And we also have eight other agencies in that book. So we always recommend that people pick that up because it's a forecast of everything that we'll purchase in the next 12 months. Um, also, in the handouts, I put the bid opportunity list because we're going to talk about that when we do the uh, navigation of the website. So the bid opportunity list are the actual bids that are on the street right now. And that comes out in a DPS alert every Monday. If you don't receive DPS alerts, there's a card out there that says DPS alerts. So and you go into our website, and I can show you that too, of how you sign up, sign up for DPS alerts. And then we'll send you the bid opportunity list every Monday. Um, I do have to let you know that this room is now being recorded. So we are live streaming to YouTube. Um, hi, you here for the class? Yes. Okay, if you could sign in and take the handouts out there. <laughs> um, so, and then for anybody who is watching on YouTube, you cannot see me, Victoria. All you can see is the actual screen with the website. So I do recommend if you're watching um, on YouTube is that you go on our page. If you go up under events and outreach, um, you can actually download the PowerPoint for this class. So um, if you wanted to follow along from home, you could actually have the PowerPoint. If you go up under events and outreach right here under what we do, you can find the PowerPoint. Um, so the camera for the people in the room is basically on the screen only. And even if there was a, if I was standing, the presenter was in the front, the camera would only be on the presenter, it wouldn't be on you. Um, but we do have to inform you that uh, that's what we're doing and we do ask that you hold your questions to the end so that I can repeat your question and answer your question in the microphone so that the people who are watching on YouTube can actually hear the question as well. Okay, so I am going to get started. Basically, the most important thing on how to navigate the DPS website is the first page of where is our website, and that is cityofchicago.org slash procurement. And I always tell people where events and outreach, where you can find that. You can do DPS events to find events and outreach as well if you're typing it into your um, search engine. So if you didn't know, the mission of the Department of Procurement Services is that we're the contracting authority for the procurement of goods and services for the city of Chicago. So we procure everything for all the city departments. We do not do the procurement for Park District, CTA, uh, Chicago Public Schools, City Colleges. All of those agencies have their own procurement process. I'm actually going to go over that under our rela related links of how you can find their procurement. We pledge to work together as a team and with our customers to guarantee an open, fair, and timely process by establishing communication and enforcing superior business practices. Integrity, public trust, and the law are guiding principles. So we are already on the home page at the on the screen. And I hope you all have really actually seen this, the home screen already, right? Hopefully, hopefully. I just know we do have like so many links and so many things that you can find on our website. So we are going to start on the feature buttons that are right at the top. And I have to always recommend, if something says uh, show all or view all services or view all releases, that means there's more information you, and you probably need to open it up so that you can see everything. So the feature buttons that we have at the top, that's okay, um, are the MBE, WBE forum, awarded contracts, the buying plan, search MBE, WBE firms, the DPS alerts, which is actually where you would
sign up for DPS alerts on our um, website, DPS Transparency and Online Auctions. So if you wanted to sign up for DPS alerts, you could just go here. And I'm not going to click on all of these because this sort of uh, self-explanatory. And some of these things can also be found in other places on the website as well. OK. So in the middle of the page, you will find most recent news. So these are usually press releases. And if I click on this, it could go down like 20 different press releases. But the most recent is the buying plan, because that just came out on Monday. Um, and then we had the October, November, December workshops. So we send that out as a reminder. So all these come out as press releases. If the mayor sends something out that has anything to do with procurement, we put it up under press releases or most recent news. Under what we do, we have auctions. And the city of Chicago does auction um, goods that we're no longer using. You can, you can find typewriters on there, old cameras, uh, trucks that might not have any wheels on it, but we auction off anything that we can get $2 for, probably. Um, so contract administration, and we are going to go through contract administration in more detail. Diversity credit, small business program. If you could sign in out there and take the handouts. Um, that is our initiatives and our ordinances. Events and outreach is what, which what, is what I do. Uh, we will go over that a little bit. A uh, list of defer, I'm sorry, debarred firms and individuals. The MBE, WBE program, which we're going to go over that a little bit more. And then rules and regs and ordinances. So the, the Department of Procurement Services has a lot of rules, a lot of regulations that we have to follow. So if there's anything that you're looking for, you can find it up under rules and regs. Then we have supporting information and city data. So city data is basically if you wanted to file a FOIA request, to receive any information that came out of procurement services. Okay. And then on the left hand side of the page, up the left and the right. Um, so on the left hand, we have apply for certification, current bid opportunities, the bid tabs, and DPS workshops. So working from the bottom up, workshops is basically the workshop schedule, the same schedule that we have out here on the materials rack. You can find it electronically here. Bid tabulations, we're actually going to go over that when I get into contract administration. So that's another place where you could actually find something in more than one spot. So bid tabulations and under contract administration. The current bid opportunities is the bid opportunity list, which you have a copy of. But this is the uh, electronic copy. It's the exact same thing that I handed out to you. And then apply for certification. And we're actually going to go up under apply for certification. Um, is anybody here already certified? OK. So you can also do a no change affidavit here. You can do a research here. And if you haven't become certified, I'm going to go through that to show you just a little bit, because there's another class, a whole class for that to learn how to become certified online. And then in the right-hand column, um, these are just videos of uh, events that we've had. It's like little video clips of things that we've done in the department. But under related links, I always tell people, if you're a business, don't stop with the city of Chicago when you're trying to look for contracts. All of these um, agencies, city colleges, CHA, Park District, Transit Authority, they all have their own procurement, and they have their own process. So you can click here and go to their website to find out what they have available as well in contracts. You can find out what they also have available in classes so that you can learn how to do procurement with those agencies as well. So related links are procurement for the other agencies, not our agency. They, they do not go through our agency, right? The question was, on the related links, these agencies, these are not City of Chicago contracts. These contracts belong to these agencies only. Okay. 
So I'm actually going to go to apply for certification, and that's the next page in your handout. And I added this because um, the other day somebody asked me, what is C2? They said they called our department, and somebody kept saying C2, C2. So applying for certification is a software program that we have, and we call it C2 because it's certification and compliance. So once you, uh, if you decide to become certified, you will get an account in C2 automatically. You'll have an account. Um, and then once you, if you receive a contract, your contract information can be found in C2. So you can find out what contracts you have, who's the prime, who's the sub, all this information is found in C2. So if somebody's referring to C2, this is our um, site for certification and compliance. Uh, so, the, I'm not going to go through every uh, section of C2 because it depends on if you have a username and password, what you can see. If I put in my username and password, I'm going to see the administration side. I'm not going to see the same thing that you see. So, it's better if you set up your own. So, if you're actually about to do a certification application, it will let you set up your own username and password. But you can use these uh, sections on this side. So if you wanted to see upcoming events, this is the page that you were taken to when you registered for this class. So all of our classes are here, but I do want to tell you that C2, who is a, another company, it's not even called C2, but they have their own classes as well. So we do a, um, uh, the Schedule A, the online Schedule A application. We do a face-to-face -face class. But this company also does a webinar, and, they, and I do recommend the webinar. They do a really good webinar on how to do the online application. So the, if, it's, if it has DPS in the front of the name, that means it's a face-to-face -face class, and that's a class that's probably going to happen in this room. If it doesn't have DPS, it's probably a webinar. But I do recommend that people check out what they have in webinars as well if you're trying to figure out how to do business with the city of Chicago. Okay, the other thing is if you are actually trying to apply for certification. So this is the screen you would see. And if you're already certified and you want to do your uh, either your research or your no change affidavit online. So the options are recertification, recertification which is probably a no change affidavit. Your firm is currently certified and you do not know your username, you can look it up. And then if this is a brand new certification, you would create an account. So if you were starting from scratch, you would go here to create your account. If you already have a username and password, you would just log in. Okay. Um, so the question is, would you come to this page to expand your next codes? No, you do not. So to expand codes on certification, you would have to actually send in a letter. You would send in a hard copy letter, letting the department know that you want to expand your codes to 11125 or 11689. But you also have to send in um, documentation that you can uh, actually handle those codes or you can actually perform those duties of those codes. Could you sign in for me and uh, take the handouts? So you don't have to do anything online to expand next codes. Everything has to be has to be mailed into the department. So for each company's organization, do you only have one sign in? Or can there be multiple users? Um, you should only have one sign in, but you can have more than one user. So once you sign in and you had other people in your office that you wanted to be users, then you can set up your users in your account. And I'm not sure if those users have to use the same username and password, but they would let you know that when you add the users. So you might be the boss, but you want somebody else to be the, in charge of C2. So you would put them in as users. Okay. I'm sorry. Is there a way to get multiple logins or is only one person? 
Well, that's what I was telling him. I'm, I think you probably, once you add the users, they can have their own username and password. Yeah. So do you have more than one user on yours? Yeah. Did they have their own username and password? No? Okay. Okay. So I'm not sure what happens on that end when you add a user, but if you if it's telling you that you can have another username and password and it's not working, then I would actually call the C2 helpline okay. because they will respond. And, and that's another thing I want to tell you. If you're in C2 and you're having a problem, always uh, check the, the helpline because they are very good at returning calls or returning emails. If you're having a problem with your application, they do get back to you right away. Okay. So I am going to go into contract administration, and I am going to take questions at the end because if it's something that you're looking for, if it's something you want me to click on, I will go back. But the one, I'm going to try to go to the things that I know most people are looking for, and most people uh, it would be helpful. Okay. So if it's something else that I don't hit on before the end of the class, then you can just let me know, and I'll go back. So under awarded contracts, like I said, if anything has a drop down, you should probably drop it down so that you can see everything that's included in that section. What happened? It went blank. Oh no, not IT problems from the IT class. Okay, here it is. All right, so you can see there's a lot of different information up under contract administration. So we have awarded contracts, bid and bond bid and bond tabulations, bid and bond room information, uh, the takeout list, and we're going to go over the takeout list, RFPs, RFQs, RFIs, small orders, contract information surge, emergency contracts. So this is like anything that you need to find regarding city contracts is under this page. But what I want to take you up under, which is it would be very helpful for you if you are um, trying to do business with the city. First of all, I'm going to over water contracts, but I first want to take you to the bid takeout list because this is sort of important if you are trying to bid on something. So, when we, has anybody bid on anything with the city? Yes? Okay. Uh, so basically, if you decide that you're going to come and pick up a, uh, a bid, bid information, something comes out in the bid opportunity list, and, and actually I need a bid, can I borrow somebody's um, BOL, the bid opportunity list? Okay. <laughs> so this is the most updated bid opportunity list. So say you decided you wanted to uh, bid on bandit tools, parts, and accessories. But you want to know who else is going to bid against you. So this is what you, this is the page you would go to to find out who else picked it up. No records. So nobody picked that one up. Let's see, what else can I find? This might be new, so that might be why it's nothing picked up yet. Here we go. So 130839 is Cottage Grove Avenue's streetscaping. So we've had several companies come pick up the bid information. So if you were a construction company and you decided you wanted to pick this up, you can see everybody who is your competition. Or if you decide, hey, I can't, um, 
compete with any of these companies. But I want to contact one of them and see if I can do work with them. Those are your options. Either you're checking out who's your competition, or you can call them and say, hey, is it a possibility that I can do concrete for you? Or can I do security for you? Or can I do the uh, construction cleanup for you? So you have to be your advocate for your company and call these places and see what you could do for them. Or if it's something during construction, um, and there, this one doesn't have one, but um, some of these have pre-bid meetings. So if we're having a pre-bid meeting here in the department, and you see that 10 other companies picked up the bid, you might want to come to the pre-bid meeting because you want to be in the room with those companies when they come to ask questions. And then you can give out your card or give out your capability statement to these companies and let them know, hey, is it possible we can get a meeting with you? Are you going to bid? Um, can we collaborate on this job? So you would be prepared before you even get, get into the room for the pre-bid because you, know, you possibly know who's going to show up for that pre-bid. So this is a really, really good tool. Every time somebody picks up a bid, we take a business card. And the business card information goes on our website. So everything that's in this bid opportunity list, we have the information for who picked up that bid. OK, here you go. Thank you. So it's a really good tool. And I always tell people, even if you can't bid on it, at least find out who is. It's some, it might be something you can do for them. And, and you can't do it unless you meet them, unless you set up a meeting. You give them your capability statement. They need to know who you are. And another thing, that, and we do events all the time, and I um, get business cards all the time. If somebody looks at your business card and can't tell what work you do, that business card is not effective. You need to be able to tell when you, somebody looks at your card. They, if they can't tell what work you do, how is that business card going to help you? Because they might say, oh, I met somebody named John William, but his card just says John William with a phone number. So how am I supposed to know if I want to do work with that person? And then I even tell people, do a capability statement, a one-page sheet that tells everything that you do. If you're a painter, if you do drywall, if you do landscape, but you do landscape, you do snow removal, you do grass, you do bushes, your capability statement should show all of that. Okay, so I went off a little bit, but <laughs> hopefully that, that helps you when you try to talk to people who are going to bid on something. So back to contract administration and to awarded contracts. So this probably would be the most valuable information for you um, if you're actually ready to bid on something. So I hope everybody saw, I just clicked on awarded contracts, and it came up to a uh, contract. Now, I have never clicked on any of these other agencies, only city of Chicago. But if you're at home, maybe you want to click on park district or housing authority or transit authority to see what contracts, what's going on in their contracts. I'm only going to talk about city of Chicago. So. Um, how is this tool useful to you? If you are a landscaper and you want to do landscaping for the city of Chicago, you might either want to first find out who's already doing landscaping, and two, when does their contract end? Because once that contract ends, if we don't give them an extension, then that contract might go back out for bid shortly after that contract ends. So you would need to know when it's going to end. Um, or you might want to see the paperwork that they submitted when they won the bid. So if you can get that uh, information, that might give you an easier chance to know what you need to put in your bid once it comes back out for bid. Okay. So on this page is showing you the most 10 most recent awarded contracts. And I'm not going to go through all of them, but you can see that the companies are listed and for what department they're going to be working, what type of work they're going to be doing. So these are the last 10. Uh, well, this, well, it, it depends on your search. And I, when I do a search, I'm going to do an example search, and we can see how far back it goes. And again, it depends on how old the contract. Like if it, if it was a 10-year contract, then 
you would see all the information. If they had an extension, you would see everything. Okay. So all the the um, sections or selections are over to the left hand side. So I'm gonna go to bid tracker first. And basically, bid tracker is just telling you where the Department of Procurement Services is in the process of this contract. So on your handout under awarded contracts, I put some spec numbers so that you can, just as an example, so if you're at home and you're trying to figure this out, you'll know what you need. And the big bid spec numbers are on the bid opportunity list. So you should always, you know, look to the bid opportunity list for your spec numbers, okay? So I'm gonna put in a number here So we can see that we've already had several steps in this contract. Let's see if we can tell which one it is. There's no name on it. So the receipt of new project was in February of this year. We advertised it in March of this year. The bid opening was completed in April of this year. And right now they're in the rec recommendation of award in progress. So um, once bids come in, there's a team that gets together and examines all the bids that have come in. Um, that team is made up of people from the department that put out the contract and people from procurement and whoever else is a subject matter expert in that contract or in that service or goods. Um, they, they put up the team, we put the team together, and they all go over what is in that bid, on, on, in all of the bids that come in. So contracts and awards. So in this one, you could put in more than one type of search. If you know the vendor name, you could put the vendor name. If you know the spec number, you could use that. If you have the contract number, you can use that. So it's, uh, or if you just want to go from 2014 to 2015 and see all the contracts that were awarded during that time. So I'm going to uh, just put in a name first because, and most of you might know this name, and they do have quite a few contracts. So we use Christy Weber, landscaping. She has lots of contracts with the city of Chicago. So I'm not going to click on them because it, there is a lot of information behind the spec number as well as her name. So what did she uh, submit when she won the bid? You can find out uh, how long the contract is for. If you decided you wanted to um, comprehensive landscape service regions two and three and you wanted to do that, then you can find out when this contract is going to end. You can find out what's in the contract. You can find out what she put in her bid information. Um, we can put the spec number in that we just used. Let's see. So Summit Construction. So they're doing work on 99th Street, Parkway Streetscape for Department of Transportation. So it, it depends on what information you have. If you don't have the name, but you have a spec number and vice versa, you can still do a search. Okay. Bid tabulation. Back number. So this was a request for a proposal for market research and consultant services. So these are all the bidders. So bid tabulation is telling you who bid. So for market research and consulting. We had American Directions Research, CR Market Surveys, Custom Interpret Solutions, and Ventures Unlimited.
and then you could go up on the details to find out more information about what information they sit in for their bid. Yes. Yes. It's under awarded contracts. Keep going. So these are only examples. Yeah, so I'm using all those examples. That's the spec number. And then um, the spec number is under market research, 110845. And then uh, um, another example is psychiatric services, which is probably through health department. So temporary psychiatric services personnel. Uh, so it's been two contracts, and these have been the people who have bid on it. Does that make sense to everybody? Okay. And then we did already go over the bid take the bid takeout list. But this is the same one, one two six nine zero eight. This one is completed already, but these are the people who took out the bid. So this is a spec that has been completed, but these were all the names of the people who took it out. And I want to go to search options page because on this page you can put in, um, you don't have to have a specific name. So if I just wanted to put in landscaping. So all the companies who have contracts with us to do landscaping would come up. So before I remember we put in Christy Weber. So all of her contracts came up, but I was more general this time, and I just said landscaping. So say you are a painter, and you just want to see who has a painting contract, you just put in painting. If you do psychiatric services, maybe you just put in psychiatric services to see what comes up. Um, if you do training and development, you can just put in training and development if you don't have an actual name. But if you do have a name, like we did uh, Christy Weber, or and, it, and on your handout, I used A&M Bus Service. Ah, did I spell it wrong? I know they have something. Okay. Oh, I spelled service wrong. But it shows you if you don't have the name exactly right, it won't come up. Yeah, if you're trying to get a name. Yeah. Company? Oh, okay. <laughs> and my keyboard is delayed. Okay, am I stuck? IT difficulties, so like it slowed down. I keep putting services. Doesn't want to come up. Did 
the platooning spaces. It's not moving. Okay, this is, I don't know if this page is, is stuck, because I can't even, right, right, exactly. So if you, um, because I typed it in here, and actually you can see it on your handout. Everything the AM bus company is doing comes up with the contract amount, and you can click on the contract number to find out more information about that contract. Okay. So let's see if I can get to another page. So I'm going to come out of this page. And go to MBE, WBE searches. So this is important because if you become certified, your company is automatically put into the MBE, WBE database. Why is that important? Because if there's a contract that has a set aside for a minority or woman-owned business, we expect our primes to do searches for your company. If they're looking for a sub, we expect them to use this database to find subs. So as soon as you get your approval letter, procurement services will add you to the database. Right. <laughs> so from this page, you can do a search by business description, business name, if you have the owner's name, um, you can use several different searches, uh, categories to do your search. If they're MBE, WBE, if you only want MBEs, this is how you would do the search. Okay, depending on what you're looking for, you might find hundreds, like construction, you can find hundreds of names to do construction. And then if you needed to download it to an Excel spreadsheet, you can do that. So this is the site where if you are trying to find other MBEs or other WBEs to do work with or do work for, this is the site that you would go to. So what we do under certification. Is anybody interested in becoming certified but just has not completed the paperwork yet okay so under what we do is the MBE WBE program for certification all the documents that you need for certification are on our website we do recommend and we do sort of try to ask people to do everything online but everybody's not comfortable with doing everything online so we do have all documents on the website so again it says view our services for certification. And these uh, links will basically tell you about the different programs, but this one, Forms and Documents, that's going to be your most important page. So everything regarding minorities, uh, ACDBE, DBE, MBE, WBE is on this page. Rules and regs, all the attachments that you have to have. I always, always recommend people to go to the help text and the document checklist because you need to know all the documents you need before, before you even start the, the um, application. So you should try to go to these links and uh, print out your attachments so you know everything that you need to go with the application. Expedited certification. Um, so expedited certification is a shorter application, and that is for people who have become certified through the Women in Business Development Center or the Minority Supplier Diversity Council. But both of those agencies charge you. So they're going to charge you. They're going to they're certify you, but they're going to charge you, and you still got to come through the city of Chicago and pay 250 so it's up to you if you want to go through them first. They are going to make sure you have all the correct documents and that you are ready for certification, but they're going to charge you more than 250 
and then you'll still come to us. When you could probably just come to our class. We do a how to become certified class. We do a doing business with the city of Chicago class. So I always recommend that you do our class and just uh, pay the 250. But um, I do highly recommend both of those agencies. They are very good for helping small businesses. But it's just if you want to pay twice, so you don't have to. Um, expansion request is up there, so that's when you're expanding on your next codes. But basically, all that one—it's a one pager, right here. Supplemental forms and information. Yeah. Expansion request. So for an expansion request, all it, when you click on it, it's all it's telling you is that you have to send the information in um, on your letterhead. Let us know what next codes you want and prove put uh, include all documentation to say that you can prove that you can do those services. Okay, so all the documents, the no change affidavit information, um, your personal net worth information, and then the ACDBE and DBE is a federal program. So you have to be ACDBE certified to do any work at the airport. And DBE is federal work and is usually good for Metra, CTA, uh, PACE, uh, type transportation type uh, agencies. And DBE and ACDBE application is free. Okay. ACDBE is free. And we do accept both of those applications. And I have to let you know is that also is that certification is now reciprocal with the county. So if you want to do work with the county and you have the city certification, you do not have to go get certified with the county. Once you get your approval letter, you can bid on anything with the county with the letter from the city and vice versa. So if you go get certified with the county, we will accept that, that um, approval letter so that you can bid on city work but we don't take anyone else's certification other than ours and the county so if you go get a certification from the state you can do work with the state with that certification but you cannot do work with the city with that certification okay so uh, lots of other people do certification but we only accept ours and the county not that I know of no Um, you do a no change aff affidavit every year, which is free, but after five years, you have to do recertification. The question was, what is the renewal process? So every year you do a no change affidavit, every five years you have to do a recert, and you do have to pay the 250 again after five years. And you have to keep up with your dates because we don't send out something saying, hey, your certification just expired. So it's up to you to keep up with your renewal dates. So I'm going to go into events and outreach. And of course, if you're here, you know that you can register from this page. So you click here to register for upcoming workshops and events. And on your handout, the page probably looks a little different. I did leave it like that on purpose because we usually have three major events every year. And when we um, are getting ready for those events, you can find it on this page. So the page in your handout is showing our, uh, I believe it's the Vendor Fair and the Financial Symposium. So we will have a construction summit already in the making. In February, we'll have a Vendor Fair in May, <laughs> and we're working on a new event for August. So it will always be listed on this page, and you, should be, and you will be able to register from this page. And the workshop schedule is always here. You can find the entire workshop schedule which is the same copy that's out there on the uh, materials rack. And you can um, find all PowerPoint slides. So that's why I said if anybody was watching today and they wanted to follow along, they could find the PowerPoint on this site. And so I'll click here just so you can see. It gives you a description of the class and the PowerPoint. So some of these don't have a PowerPoint, like meet the Department of Procurement Services. That's when all of our deputies come down from procurement, and you get to ask them any question you might have. Um, and our first deputy, he's the host for that. 
DPS incentives and overview. I do believe we have a PowerPoint for that now. I have to update that. Um, but all the other ones, they have PowerPoints. And you can, if you want to watch from home on any workshop, you can pull the PowerPoint and watch from home. Only thing is you just don't get to see me or ask questions. <laughs> That's that page. And then we do all, we put all the um, news releases on this page, workshop schedules, so everything. And then, like I said, when we have our events, they would definitely be listed on this page. So, and also, if you go here, to the events calendar. Um, so we have started any event that I have to go to that might be for some for another agency, we have been listening on our calendar. If the calendar come in, come on in. There we go. So all of the workshops are listed and then other, any other events that we, we will um, be hosting a table, an exhibitor table, we try to put it on this page as well. So, um, like next week, the Chicago Park District is having a vendor fair. We try to promote everybody's events because, um, say you do landscaping and you want to find out who else is going to have some contracts, the Chicago Park District uh, event would be the place you want to be. So it's listed here. You can't register from here, but the information for the event is here. So we try to, this is another place if you want to see what's, what else is coming up what other uh, events are coming up. You can, so there's a construction, transportation, what's this November? Yeah, so the Transportation Symposium and Business Exchange will be at South Shore Cultural Center November 12th. Construction Industry Conference November 9th. So this is all just, you know, helpful information if you're trying to find other business. And if these people are having events that you think you need to attend, you can um, always go to their website to find more information. So I'm back to the home page. And is there anything I didn't click on or anything that anybody has any questions about that I can pull up on the website? Nobody? Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, on your request, you always ask for redacted submittals from vendors. Yes. Where are the redacted submittals such as stored? So, who asked for the redacted documents? Uh, the firm procurement always asks for a copy of redacted that they can post it on the website. Now, you know what? I don't know that. That might be, I might have to take your card and send that to you. Uh, so, like FOIA documents, when we, no. Right, right, right. I know what you redact. I just, I'm not sure where they post the redacted documents. And I might even be able to ask Tish, who's in the bedroom that she might know. Yeah, she's hiding behind the curtain <laughs> because she receives a lot of that information. So she might know. Tish? Carol? Can you come to the door for me? Well, he wants to know where they're posted. That's what he's at. Carol, do you know where, um, so a gentleman had a question about when we do bids, we ask for redacted documents. When they um, submit a document or submit a bid, is that what you're saying, sir? Yeah, actually, professional service won't ask for redacted version of the submittal for posting to the website. So he wants to know where do we post the redacted documents, and I don't know that. Is, uh, is Tish back there? Because I know somebody from upstairs has to post that information. Yeah, I don't know who does that. I mean. Yep, you can. So, um, so you see. 
<laughs> so you'd have to have a spec number. Yeah, a spec number. I know the staff upstairs puts it on the on the website. Okay. I, for his question, for where if if they're asking for it when you sit, put submit a bid. And it's saying it's going to be submitted, it's going to be posted. It, it is posted. I just don't know where they post redacted documents, but I can find out and send that to you. And I can actually just send you the link. Yeah. Any other questions? The bid opportunity list comes out every Monday. So if you sign up for DPS alerts, we send it to you, to your email address. So it changes every Monday. Yep. So every Monday is just what came out the week before. It's continuing. It's continuing. It would okay, so every open bid. Yes. So every open bid. If something was added, it's added. If it's something that doesn't end until two weeks out, it'll be on the next the next one. The buying plan is right here on the uh, materials oh, rack. Okay. Yeah. So the buying plan just came out Monday. It's a brand new buying plan. And you can find it on the rack out there. And I do, I do, uh, you know, recommend that people pick it up on the way out because it is a forecast all the way out to January 2017. Thank you. Okay. Sure. So, if there are no other questions, um, you could just put it up there, right on that blue and white sign. If you, so, thank you. If you could just fill out the evaluation forms, and then you can put them on the counter at the front. I appreciate it, and hope to see you at the next workshop. <laughs>